Thank you for joining us in this presentation. I am uh, very appreciate uh, Dr. Lee that gave me his place to introduce for the first time the, this uh, new finding of aeolian deposits in uh, the Yan Chan Formation. Uh, as you know, the, the positional model of the Yan Chan Formation was very simplified during years because we recognize uh, fluvial deposit, delta or littoral delta deposits, and the transition to deep water to a deep water lake. But uh, uh, some question appears when we understand when we try to understand the accumulation of the Ordos Basin or the, or the Yan Chan Formation because it's very difficult to justify the amount of fine grain sandstone we have in the basin. One possible situation is to think about coeval aeolian system that supply the sandstone to the basin during the floods. But this aeolian deposit has not been recognized until the present. So I am going to show you some uh, uh, this uh, presentation, we are going to uh, discuss the objectives, then go into the study area, discuss some the geological setting. Uh, we are going to discuss a little about the stratigraphy and the evolution of the Yanchan formation. I would like to show you some evidence about uh, the accumulation of aeolian deposits in the Yanchan formation, and we are going into the conclusion. So, the objective of this presentation will be to discuss the origin and internal stratigraphy of the Triassic Yan Chang formation in the Ordos Basin for a different perspective, because we are going to discuss the possible existence of coeval aeolian system in the surrounding of this very big lake. Uh, as you know, aeolian systems are, are usually the main factory of fine grain sands in most basins. As you know, in, in Yan Chan formation, we don't have any gravels, we don't have conglomerate. So it's very important to understand the origin of this sandstone. So we are going to describe for the first time the presence of aeolian deposit in the Chan Chan formation and we are going to discuss the importance of this aeolian system probably as a factory of fine grain sandstone in the Yan Chan formation. So the study area and geological setting as you know the Ordos Basin is located in central uh, China is uh, the remnant of a, very, is of a huge and complex foreland basin. Uh, during the Triassic, this uh, basin, or the Ordos Basin, evolved into a large continental basin. And as a consequence, we have the accumulation of more, of more than 1,000 meters of lacustrine and related deposits. Uh, here we have a box a uh, red box showing the location of the study area conducted during this joint collaboration between PetroChina and our university in Argentina. So, uh, the stratigraphy of the Ordos Basin was divided into 10 different members to uh, that can be recognized along this sedimentary column of more than 1,000 meters thick. Uh, this is the stratigraphic column for the Ordos Basin, and this is a paleographic map showing the distribution of the different elements from uh, deep lake toward uh, delta, deltaic deposit, uh, delta front, delta plain, and alluvial phases. As you can see, the depositional model is quite uh, simple, but at present, no uh, aeolian deposits were recognized in this basin. Okay, now we are going to discuss some uh, topics about the stratigraphy and the evolution of the 
Yan Chang formation. So, this is a uh, detail of the study area. Uh, the, we, are go we, we describe a lot of sedimentary section in the different, in two main uh, areas in Jichuan and Zhangchang and it, it, it was about uh, 29 uh, sedimentary sections that allow us to build a new composed stratigraphic section of the, all the Yanchang formation. In particular, we are going to focus in one of the sections uh, located in the Yanchang area, at the, uh, at the base of the Yanchang area. Uh, this is a, a, a diagram showing the different uh, sedimentary sections. We have measured and analyzed a different position of this uh, stratigraphic column and in particular we are going to focus on this uh, section, the Yanchang 3 section, located almost more or less in the middle lower part of the Yanchang formation. So it's very interesting uh, if we take into consideration the different kind of uh, phases and phases association we have in the Yanchang formation that uh, we have for the first time the description of aeolian deposits. Uh, this aeolian deposits was uh, recognized from diagnostic, some diagnostic sedimentary structures we are going to discuss in this, along this speech. Uh, we are, have uh, phases of uh, dunes, interdunes, showing also very typical sedimentary structures. So, <clears throat> the origin of uh, massive sandstone or fine grain sandstone in Ordos Basin was very challenging because uh, mm, we need a process or a related depositional environment that allow the, um, allow the production of an enormous volume of uh, fine grain materials like fine grain sandstone. For example, in this diagram we have this uh, temporary stored sediment. Probably in our model we need a depositional system coeval with the lake that take uh, into consideration or to take part in the um, as a factory of fine grain sandstone. So, uh, we are going to discuss this uh, marginal aeolian deposits. As, as you know, this, uh, the lake during the underfill uh, lake condition, the lake fluctuates a lot uh, during the periods of low sediment and water supply, the lake level fall, allowing the uh, regression and also the subaerial exposure of large areas of coastal of the coastal lake. So, uh, as you see in this uh, this uh, diagram, you have at the center part of the basin this permanent uh, lacustrine zone and a marginal uh, lacustrine area in which you have cyclically forced flood or exposed uh, zone. In this area, we, you, we can have deltas or we can have some uh, continental deposits. In some situations, when the lake level fall, uh, aeolian system can progress and can accumulate also in these marginal areas. So, very important for the depositional model are these aeolian deposits. So, uh, I would like to show you some uh, characteristic of aeolian deposit in the Yanchang formation. Uh, this is a sedimentary sheet in the Yanchang area, the Yanchang uh, tree. As you can see here, this section starts 
with uh, uh, at the basal part you have shales with uh, some uh, marginal soil with roots following with a sandy section. This sandy section you have this uh, typically grainfall dunes and then you have some interbedding uh, deposits with uh, some erosional channels with the shales related to wet interdune. So at this position you have a complete uh, aeolian system related to this lake level 4 uh, lake level 4 during the regressive system track of this uh, sequence. As you can see here we are in the sequence in the underfill part of the Yan Chang formation. So in this uh, photograph you can see some uh, details of the lower boundary of uh, the, this aeolian deposits in which uh, you can see these uh, red beds here with a very uh, very well uh, recognized well, well you can see here the roots some roots related and also some nodules here calcareous nodules related to soils in this part and sharply you have this sandstone with a cross bedding. This cross bedding is very interesting because if you look in detail this cross bedding you can recognize uh, a lot of uh, sedimentary structures which are considered diagnostic of aeolian origin. Like for example this claiming translatine stratification. Claiming translatine stratification is a diagnostic sedimentary structure of aeolian uh, deposit that was recognized by Hunter in 1977 and uh, as you can see here these are different laminas showing internally uh, reverse grading. This reverse grading is related to the fact that uh, aeolian deposits has the quartz material toward the crest and the uh, fine grain material toward the sinus or the lee side. For example, when we, when we prograde these uh, small uh, ripples, we, we build these uh, quartzenine upward small packages, small laminas, which are typical of aeolian deposition, diagnostic of aeolian deposits. Another interesting feature for, that suggests an accumulation in an aeolian system is granular ripples. These granular ripples have been defined uh, some time ago with, uh, by Sharp and also you can have a very good uh, description by Freibecher in 1992 and basically are composed of this uh, uh, patch of quartz uh, grain sandstones which are related to very strong wind that uh, uh, take away the finest part of the sandstone and concentrate these quartz grain materials here as you can see here. Granular ripples are typical of this uh, in aeolian succession as you can see in the Ordos uh, basin. So, uh, finally, we have these uh, grainfall dunes. Grainfall dunes are very low angle dunes related to dirty winds. Why we talk about dirty wind? Because, because we separate this kind of wind with respect to the clean winds. In clean wind, you move especially just air. In dirty wind, we move a mixture of air and sediment. So this amount of sediment is concentrated in the frontal part of these uh, dunes and uh, make uh, this kind of dunes to be very low angle or very gentle dunes. And uh, typically along the, all the four sets of these dunes you can recognize this uh, 
claiming translatent deposits, claiming ripples. So, each one of these laminas in the frontal part of the dunes is composed of claiming translatent ripples. So, you can see, as you can see here, you can recognize the reverse grading in the different laminas, suggesting an aeolian origin for these deposits. Uh, in the middle of the, this aeolian succession, it's very interesting, you can find shales, these massive shales, as you can, you can see here, which are deeply incised with these uh, channels, channels with large block of intraformational gravels or intraformational conglomerate. These gravels are made of the same uh, shales you have here mm, and form part of uh, the field of these uh, ephemeral channels or ephemeral fluvial deposits. In our interpretation, this aeolian system composed of uh, grainfall dunes with a lot of uh, this uh, claiming translatent stratification uh, are interpreted with this deposit related to wet interdunes. Wet interdunes develop, develops in, in between the different uh, dunes system. So during the floods or during the heavy rainfall, the uh, you can build some shallow pools or shallow lakes in between the dunes and occasionally you can have this uh, flooding from ephemeral fluvial currents entering these low areas in between the different uh, dunes. So this is the, the positional model we recognize for these aeolian deposits uh, these aeolian deposits are located uh, during a regressive system track of uh, depositional sequences during a period of low lake uh, level. So the aeolian deposit that happened in, at marginal position of the Zhang Zhang formation progrades and are located in an inner position uh, because of this uh, lake level for. So, in this cartoon, you can see these uh, aeolian dunes or grainfall dunes, and in, in surrounding these uh, wet interdunes with these uh, shallow pools of shallow lakes, with these uh, ephemeral fluvial currents entering these low areas or low wet areas. So, uh, going into the conclusions, uh, we can say that uh, this contribution provides for the first time a documentation of aeolian deposits in the Triassic Yan Chang formation. Uh, the presence of coeval aeolian system outside the permanent Yan Chang lake is fundamental to provide a rational explanation for the origin of fine-grained sandstone. As we discussed earlier, in the Yangchang, one of the characteristics of the Yangchang formation is the total absence of quartz-grained material like uh, pebbles or conglomerates. So, in this, according to this model, during the periods of low sediment supply to the to the Yangchang Lake, probably a lot of sandstone were, uh, avail were made available in coeval aeolian system. This aeolian system and problem probably are the main uh, factory of fine grainy sandstone that were periodically supplied into the basin and accumulated as a different kind of delta deposit. This evidence indicates that the Yangchang Lake was probably coeval with a poorly preserved big sand desert. We don't know really the location of that desert, but for example, could be something similar to the Gobi, to the actual Gobi Desert. This sand desert 
was probably very active during periods of lake level fall. Eh? Probably supply a lot, a, a huge amount of uh, fine grain sands material. Uh, during periods of transgressive system track, when more water was available, probably those, these aeolian systems were eroded and transferred into the basin by rivers and associated gravity flow and accumulated a different kind of delta front deposit and also hyperpignal subaqueous deltas. So, uh, this is a photograph of the Gobi Desert as uh, an example of a very large uh, aeolian system that is actually uh, making a lot of fine grain material that probably will be transferred to our uh, basin in the future. Thank you very much.